So what we were going to discuss today, um, to kind of lead off what we were discussing yesterday, um, yesterday we were talking about experience and how yoga should be an experience, not just a physical exercise. And that's one reason I teach the way I do. I really enjoy changing up what we're doing physically and bringing in certain themes so that we're contemplative. I like bringing in mantra. I like bringing in you know, different forms of meditation to give you all these different samples so that you can figure out what you enjoy. But for the main reason of giving you an experience um, and an experience is something that a lot of us through this pandemic has been lacking. You know, a lot of us are still cooped up at home or, um, you know, for whatever reason, we're not getting out, we're not doing as much, but we have to remember that, you know, life is about experience. So even if you're creating those experiences at home, um, even if there's a contrast of emotions with those experiences, because there's always peaks and valleys, that's part of the beauty of being on this planet and being in this human form. So what I wanted to kind of spin off from that, I think I mentioned yesterday that when I started yoga, we would refer to it as the joy juice. And I know you guys as um, regular practitioners are, you know, you've probably noticed that, or that's one reason that draws you back to it. We talk about yoga being alchemy for the mind and the body. So we can come to the mat feeling disoriented or disheveled, and you know all these different array of things but yet by the end of the practice you might notice oh the colors are more bright or i feel more vibrant inside or you may be able to smile um, at yourself or someone else a little bit easier after the practice so our theme for today is about joy and i wanted to bring up um let's see tuesday night Yes, it was Tuesday night. Um, I got to go to a show at the Ryman. And, you know, the Ryman Auditorium is considered the mother church. And just like you guys who live here in Nashville, I'm sure you've been to different events there. I've been to award shows. I've seen country music there. I've seen rock and roll there. I've seen classic rock there. I've seen soul, uh, world, Celtic. I've seen comedy. I saw um, Carol Burnett there once. So, you know, there's all these different events that we can experience. And I was thrilled that the show the other night was gospel music. And even though I'm not like a strongly religious person now, um, religion is my roots. And I'm very happy that that's part of my roots. And all the old gospel hymns are just still to this day, if I hear it, I turn it up, I sing it out loud. and. Um, it just brings so much joy to my heart and soul to hear those good old gospel hymns. Well, Leslie Jordan is someone that you guys may or may not know off the top of your head, but he is a comedian. He's an actor. I think he was on Will and Grace and someone told me he was on Reba. And when I heard his name last year, I was like, who, you know? And then when I looked him up, I recognized him. And then when you hear his voice, you'll really recognize him. But evidently when the uh, COVID lockdown initially happened, he decided he was gonna you know, relocate back to Chattanooga, which is his roots where he grew up. And I think he wanted to be close to his mom or even live with his mom, I can't remember. And he was getting bored, you know, just sitting around day after day after day. And he decided to create an Instagram account. And it, I don't know if the account already existed or if it was new, but he decided he wanted to bring a smile and laughter to people during this time. And as you know, more people turn to TV and Netflix and social media to stay you know, entertained through that time. Anyway, he posted these videos to make people smile and laugh and to bring joy into people's homes. And someone called him, a friend of his from LA and said, Leslie, do you know you just went viral? And he didn't even know what that meant. And he was like, I don't have COVID. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 no. That's when, you know, something on, you know, the media, just everybody's starting to look at it and start to gain momentum. 
Now I think he has like 6 million followers or something crazy. Well, I didn't know about this till a number of months ago. Um, Rob had um, been asked to be a part of the album that he recorded. And the album that he recorded is gospel hymns. And he brought in, you know, stars like Dolly Parton and Chris Stapleton and Eddie Vedder and people like that. And the songs are those old gospel hymns. And when I heard the album, I just, I loved it. I, I just loved it because not only does he have these phenomenal singers, he himself can't sing at all. <laughs> and he knows this and he laughs about it. But at the same time, he's still singing with all of his heart. And even at the concert the other night, he was making fun of himself for not being able to sing or to carry a note or even able to remember the lyrics. And literally the show could have fallen apart if he hadn't been a comedian because he literally made everyone laugh. He had jokes here and there. He had all these different stars coming in to sing, in, sing uh, the songs with him. But the joy in that auditorium was palpable. Like you could touch it. Like you could look around. People were laughing. People were smiling. People were singing out loud. And it was just a really, really good time. So I want you to consider um, it, we're in Sagittarius right now. And the eclipse that's coming Saturday is in Sagittarius, even though the eclipses can be some be bringing some strong energy and shifts our way the good thing right now where we are with this energy is in this place of joy so hopefully you're able to tap into that wellspring of joy in your heart and if not hopefully this practice will help to kind of bring it up to um, the surface so let's go ahead and meet on the mat like i said we're going to be on our backs for a lot I don't think you'll need anything in particular, maybe a blanket or scrap mat at some point when we're on the knees or on the pubic bone. And then at the very end of the practice, I'll ask you to grab uh, a bolster. Uh, so we're gonna start on our backs in recline butterfly. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna be in recline butterfly for a little bit. If that's too taxing for the hips at this time, you can slide a bolster under your thighs for that. So I'll meet you on the mat. So like I said, we're going to start on our backs in recline butterfly. So the soles of the feet together, knees open and apart. I just taught the same class at the studio earlier and my hips were so kind of angry at this position. I had to slide my feet forward. Now it feels good. But if you find that your hips are unsettled, you know, just slide the feet more forward or place that bolster under your thighs to assist. And we're going to spread out the elbows, but allow the hands to rest on the upper part of the abdomen. We often talk about diaphragmatic breathing. And we mentioned this is where singers sing from, you know, to really belt out the notes and so that their voice doesn't sound nasally. One thing I loved about Leslie Jordan's voice was that he had that thick country twang. And I love hearing him sing those gospel hymns because it reminds me of growing up and visiting my granny's country church. That was all a cappella singing and there was those strong, thick country accents. So I want you to take a moment to diaphragmatically breathe. Notice the movement here in your belly. Let it balloon up and out as you breathe in. Feel it soften and descend on the out breath. So continue giving yourself this breathing treatment. 
I often say the breath brings the magic to the practice. So that's like drinking the joy juice. Consider how comedic relief brings us into belly laughter. Laughter is good for the soul. Remember to keep the inner and outer thighs relaxed. The knees can descend down with gravity. Melting away any resistance. Letting go any holding. Now that you've been putting the emphasis of breath into your belly, I want you to take your hands and lace them underneath your head. So now you're creating the upper and lower wings of the butterfly. Remembering a butterfly represents transformation, growth. Perhaps this message is needed if you've been feeling down or inundated in fear. Remembering it's important to have joyful new experiences. Notice how tying the hands behind the head helps to lengthen the back, maybe even exaggerating that sway in the lumbar area. How it picks up the floating ribs in the center of the chest. Begin to do more chest breathing. You don't have to necessarily change your breath. You may just notice the chest swelling more on your inhale. And softening again on the exhale. We often talk about the belly being the indwelling place of the sun. And we often talk about the heart being the seat of the soul that holds our inner light. So consider these areas forming together to create beautiful rays and beams of light. Light of our strength, confidence, and resiliency. The light of the love and joy and peace that's within the heart. Let's take three more breaths.
On your next inhalation, go ahead and sail your arms off to the side, shoulder height. And then go ahead and flutter the knees up, remove the bolster if you used it so that you can flatten your feet. And do a little scooping of the belly and a little tucking of the tailbone. And now cross your left ankle over the right knee. Test the waters here. This may be perfect for you today. Otherwise, if you want to move deeper into the stretch, pick up the right foot, place your hands behind your right thigh. Let your right foot just dangle down. Remember, this is more of a yin approach. So in the active approach, I usually say flex the feet and try not to sickle uh, the foot on the knee. But in yin, it doesn't really matter. I would like you to notice, either with your eyes closed or open, which direction you tend to lean towards. Because the way we approach poses can teach us and reveal to us how we typically approach life. Notice how much of a grip you're using, what direction you may be swaying towards the stretch or away from it. And you don't have to change anything, just be aware of it. Continue to monitor how much sensation you want to feed yourself. As long as you can continue breathing with depth. If the sensation has lessened, find your second edge. If at any point it intensifies or prohibits the breath, do less. Let's release the right leg. Bring the arms more in an A-frame position as you lower the right foot to the floor. Heel to the right foot over maybe just a smidge and then allow the knees to roll off to your left. If this pulls too much on the right side of your low back, your left foot doesn't have to stay stacked on the knee. You can drop it to the floor. But I want you to crawl the shoulders away from the ears or just lift and lengthen the arms down away from the face. And then you're going to slowly, like a tortoise pace, turn your head to the left. And at the same time, slightly nod or tuck the chin downward. Towards that left shoulder. And open up the right side of your neck.
you can also use the power of that left foot stacked on the knee. As a weight, as a way to elongate the right thigh and to drop the right knee a little lower towards the ground. No intention to touch here. Notice when you're watching the inhalation, it may not be in the center of the belly or chest as it was before. It may be appearing more on that right side. Give you an option for the next pose. But the first thing I want you to do is allow the chin to back away from the shoulder. So you're creating a little space there, sliding the head up and back. Now lower the left foot if you haven't already. Now your choice here is to just lift your right leg and then place it on top of your left for a spinal twist. Or you can go into alligator pose, which is keeping the ankle stacked, stretching the legs up and out. And some of you may even be able to take a hold of the big toes with your left hand. Now that requires a little effort. So if you want to be truly in, right, you don't have to flex the feet. You don't have to hold the feet. You can just be here and let go. Close the eye. I tend to think of alligators. I tend to think danger. <laughs> And uh, when I was at that concert the other night, Leslie Jordan was talking about, you know, some of the difficulty of growing up as a gay man in the South. And he was the son of a military man. But the stories he shared about his childhood was very endearing. His family loved him unconditionally and were completely accepting of him and they were obviously churchgoers and went to church every week and at six years old he came home one Sunday and said dad I'm never going back there again so his dad looked at him and said son why do you say that and he said because they laugh at me and so his dad got down on one knee more at his level more eye to eye and said, son, there is a difference between people laughing at you or with you. And you have a gift. God has given you a gift to make people laugh. And don't ever let anyone dim your light. Shine bright. And so there were a couple songs that he would sing. You know, he opened up with... Uh, 
this little light of mine. And then later on, he's saying, I saw the light. And I loved hearing that comment. And uh, later that evening, Rob said to me, he said, you know, can you imagine what it was like for him growing up this way in the South? I said, yeah, but hearing his stories and how much his family loved and accepted him, that's the foundation he needed to really thrive and to become really the star that he is today. You know, it all, a lot of that stems from our roots of our past. Let's go ahead and start to bend the knees. So when you bend the knees, you're going to roll back to center. All right, we did two twists in a row here. We need a counter, so let's wrap the arms lovingly across the shins. Remember, if this is too much flexion for the knees, your arms can wrap behind your thighs. You want to stay stationed. Anchor down through your low back. But come back to your breathing treatment. Mindfully breathing so that your belly bellows. And as it swells, maybe it touches a portion of your thighs. That squeeze, that pressure, that stacking, along with the breath, will really improve our digestion. Now let's lower the feet back to the ground. We'll take that sequence to the other side. So the right ankle is going to cross over the left knee. And really, some days, this is enough. So check in with your body. Maybe this is plentiful. Otherwise, if you want to feel more sensation, if you're ready for that, pick up the left foot, lace the hands behind your left thigh, and draw in. That left foot diagonal. Softening the ankles, the toes. Comparing the two sides. So it's important to practice that swadhyaya, that self-study. Studying how life shows up in the body. Where are our holding patterns? Where do we feel less mobile, more stuck? And then of course the places that we experience that with, you can always hold that position longer or once this practice ends, you can go back to the side that was feeling more tense and more locked, and you can do a few poses specifically for that area, not worried about taking it to both. That way you're helping to free it up.
if we really pay close attention, you'll notice little subtle effects that occur in the low back. You might even feel the energy awakening and flowing through the feet. Now that you've been holding it, you can move it in closer or backing away, of course, if that's too much. Now let's release the leg. Bring the arms into that A-frame position. Once the left foot sinks down, heel toe it, a baby step over to the left. Roll to the inside of that foot to lower the knees off to the right to create this twist. Pay attention to the left side of your low back. If it's too much, drop the right foot to the sticky mat. Work the shoulders lower away from your ears. And then that snail-like tortoise or sloth-like pace, roll your head to the right. And then dip the head towards it or tuck the chin towards it. I saw this viral video recently, and you may have seen it too. And it was a gentleman, probably in Costa Rica, because I know there's sloths there. He was driving and saw a sloth was trying to cross the road. And what's interesting about that is you don't see sloths on the ground very much. You know, they usually stay up for at least two weeks in the tree. They'll come down just to use the restroom and they'll go right back up. And this one was crossing the road. Well, the gentleman stopped his car. He went to pick up the sloth to help it cross the street and he actually took it to a tree. And then the sloth wrapped, you know, all of its limbs around the tree, but that's not the end of it. The sloth turned to look at the man and he elongated one of his arms his direction and then held his hand as a thank you. And then he turned back to climb up the tree. It was really a precious, precious moment. It brought me joy to see that. I'm telling you that story to bring you a little smile to your face as you consider how plants and animals, they have this conscious energy running through them as well. I personally don't want to go any deeper on this side, but remember what I suggested before, you can really extend out more through your left thigh and make your right foot way down that knee. 
if you are ready to go deeper. Your next inhalation, create some space between the chin and the shoulder. Your head still turned to the right. Lower the right foot to the floor if you haven't already. Double stack the knees if that's the twist you prefer. Or straighten out through the legs and take alligator. And again, you could be active or passive with that right hand in your feet. Unroll from that twist. Now stack your hands on your shins and separate your thighs wide. Close your eyes. So this tends to focus on the inner thighs and the hips, flattening and elongating the low back. You may notice how it affects other areas as well. Like I can feel it in my, I can't tell if it's my glutes or piriformis actually. All right, we're gonna draw the knees back together. 
and we're gonna fly the feet upward and then open the arms back out. So this is not about, you know, bringing the legs towards the face. It's just floating the feet up, you know, just simplicity here, but it's good for our circulation. for securing the pelvis. It can be calming for the mind unless sensation takes over. That would come in even more into play if we had a wall we were at. So there's a little effort involved. The bones might start to feel heavy. The feet might get a little tingly. Muscles might get slightly shaky. We're going to bring the knees together, but we're going to separate the feet and lower them down to the mat. So the feet are a little wider than hip distance, so the knees can stay collapsed into each other. And that's actually a nice release for the low back. We're going to sail both arms in the air right above us. And then I want you to cross your arms like an X shape with your left arm in front closer to you. And then you're going to continue to cross the arms. All right. So maybe you're, you know, it depends on your shoulders, really. But see if you can not only cross the forearms, but the elbows. See if you can cross from the elbows into the upper part of the arms. And then let the hands kind of just fall gently to rest next to your body. The elbows are gonna point straight up. You may even feel a little bit at your chin, but you don't wanna shield your face. You wanna still be able to breathe. Another variation of shoelace arms.
Let's slowly slide the arms back out. Let's float the feet back overhead. Think about when you are really joyful, how much light emits from you. Think about how much when you go into laughter and in that state of joy, other things kind of break up and fall away. Maybe things that have been disturbing to you before or disappointments you had been holding on to. Think about when you're embedded in that disappointment or discouragement, how you feel like your light is dim. So if you've been feeling that way, try to lighten some things up, maybe create a new experience for yourself or find some comedic relief. Let's bring the knees together and slowly lower the feet back down. Again, just a little wider than normal. Make sure it's comfortable. Knees collapsing to each other. Arms floating back up. And then crossing the forearms. This time the right arm is closer to you. Maybe seeing if your arms allow for the elbows to cross. If that still is fairly easy, take your upper arms across and then Relax the fingertips down. Elbows point straight up to the ceiling. Clarence to breathe through your chest and your nose. Slowly wrap those arms and we're going to tilt over to the left lunar side. And once you come up, this is where we're going to enter into tabletop position. So, um, and we're going to eventually go down to like a sphinx or seal. So if you need that extra padding, uh, I don't have my blanket here, but so I have your knees stacked below your hips. Your arms are going to outstretch and you're going to drop into Anahatasana. And I know sometimes our shoulders can give us a little grief. So if it feels like it's too much to do both arms, please know you can start off with your left. 
allowing your right arm to provide the headrest, and then eventually switch to the other side. Okay. Avahatasana. We're going to slowly shift forward. Let your elbows spill to the floor. And then we're going to slowly rock the hips through and down. Okay, now this is where you may need that padding underneath the hip bones. I would separate the feet a little wider, give a little wiggle to the hips. You can stay here stacked on forearms. You can also move into prayer hands. And this is where if you want to amp it up more, you can also take the hands wider than the shoulders and lift up into seal. want an affirmation this is one we usually use for paragasana but it works for a bat then too and for our theme today waves of joy are surging upward in my spine you could even add waves of joy are surfing up from my heart Gently roll it down. Slide the hands up underneath the shoulders. Push up to all fours. And exhale to downward facing dog. From here, we're going to walk the hands back to dangling pose. Dangling, you can bend the knees. Now, I go through different seasons with my practice where I start preferring one expression or another. Lately, I'm really enjoying the ragdoll position, just the arms hanging free. A lot of people still enjoy the uh, 
crossing the arms. And I do enjoy that some days. So pick one. And then after you decide what to do with your arms, then slightly nod your head. And then eventually come to stillness, even though you may still feel an eruption of energy, a slight quivering through the legs, or some movement in your mind. Notice how the tongue may be kind of pressing into the rooftop of the mouth. There is an acupressure point there, so you don't have to change it. Just notice if that's a natural occurrence for you. Hold three more breaths. At the end of your three, you can crawl the hands forward and gently come down to your knees. So we are going to use our bolster or a restorative back bend. I'm gonna give you a choice. If you wanna keep it simple, you can just line it up with the spine and roll back. If you want it to be a little deeper, you can do restorative fish by turning it this way, but ensuring that your head and arms spill over to the other side. Once you get settled into the pose, begin your mindful breath work, breathing in a diaphragmatic way at first, and then letting the control of the breath subside so it can become more natural. Continue to release and relax in your back bend. Reconnecting to yourself as well as source energy. And we'll have Shavasana for about four minutes. So take advantage.
to open up your breath. And you're ready. Roll to one side of the body. Come up to find a seat. And as you sit upright, go ahead and close your eyes. Join your hands together at your heart. And let's all make a commitment to ourselves that at least for today, we will do something or find something to bring us more joy. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. 